Well, good morning. I say good morning to you and welcome. Glad you're a part of our service today. And those of you that are joining us online, it's, uh, it's our pleasure to say this is the day the Lord had made and we're going to rejoice. And I encourage you to do the same because God, he is real, he's alive, and he loves us very, very much. So we're glad you're a part of our service. And, and uh, I know it's difficult, but you can see me and I can't see you. But uh, let it just be said that we're here for you. We're thankful that you're tuning in. And I trust, as we all do here, even at our service, that it's a blessing to you. And we love you and we miss you. And if there is something we can do, please, please contact us. Get in touch with us. You know our, our information's on the screen. We are here for you. Even though I know that there's a distance between us, there is no distance really between us other than just geography. And we're here to be a blessing. So please let us know. And uh, rest assured, you're in our prayers. We are believing with you. And if there's something specifically that we can begin praying with you about, please, as I said, contact me. My information's on the screen. You know my, my, my email address, my cell phone number. All those are available, obviously. And just, just let us know what we can do to be a blessing to you, wherever you happen to be. Um, well, anyway, let's go ahead and let's get started. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, praise you, and we do love you, Father. In the midst of every circumstance and situation of our lives, we have found cause reason to rejoice and be glad for you are alive and you are so forevermore father we thank you for the move of your spirit within our lives each day as vital as real as it is that father in every circumstance we find ourselves in we know of a certainty you are there in us and with us that father you have given us your solemn promise that you would never leave us and you would never forsake us father we don't take that for granted we are so thankful that you're with us you are needful, Father, in our circumstances, in our lives, in our, in our families, in the decisions that are, that are before us. Thank you, Father, that we're not flying solo, but, Father, we are flying, as it were, solely with you. Help us. Give us the wisdom that we need, as you have promised in your, in, in your word, Father, in James chapter 1. You said if anybody needs or lacks wisdom, we should ask you for it. Father, right now we're asking you for wisdom for what is needful, what is needed to be done so we may glorify you and fulfill our purpose and continue to be significant in our lives even today. And Heavenly Father, we praise you for what you've got in store for us and I ask that you would move upon our hearts, allow our lives to shine as a testimony of your greatness. And Father, allow as it were the time that we do have here to be spent as it were and we would say when we are finished, you know what, I have just spent time with Jesus. And he has spoken into my heart. Father, we thank you for every single person that, Father, if they need healing in their body, that we, Father, just thank you and claim it by faith that they are healed, whole, well, and blessed in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we thank you, praise you, and love you with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, we just want to say again, thank you for coming and being a part of our service. We're going to ask you, if you don't mind, very quickly, we're going to start off and we're going to be ministering today as the last several weeks we have about perseverance. We're going to now take off a hold of that and encourage you about your believing. You know, a lot of people can be persevering. They can be, you know, as it were, you know, focused on what is before them and trying to endeavoring to serve God. But folks, we can't do that in the flesh. We need to have that perseverance to be able to see through every circumstance and see the will of God. But once we see the will of God, we need to incorporate a faith and a trust, a confidence that God brings into our lives to see these things come to pass. In other words, what I'm saying is we don't quit, but we need to make sure that we're not quitting doing the will of God, believing God, expecting the will of God to be done in our lives. In other words, what you're believing for right now, we're expecting that God brings to you that, that, that needed resources, the favor with both himself and others to, to see that happen, to see that manifested in our lives. So I'm asking you right now, what are you believing for? What are you believing for? If you can't immediately tell me what you're believing for, you need to get something you're believing for. It ought to be something that instantly you know what you're believing for. If Jesus were to appear to you sometime today in the solitude of your home and your car, wherever you, wherever you happen to be at that moment and ask you a simple question, what are you believing me for right now? You ought to be able to instantly say, let me, I, I've got it right here. Here's what it, it shouldn't be. Well, let me see what, am, um, let me see. You, know, you ought to know instantly what it is that you're believing God for. And every, in every issue of life, we should be believing God, trusting God. And you see people say that all the time. Just trust God, trust God. Yeah, but trusting God is more than just an expression. Trusting God is a decision. It's a choice. 
It's an action that, that we make to say, this is what I'm trusting God for. This is what I'm believing God to do. This is what I am trusting in him to bring to pass in my life. And you ought to know what that is. Because how can you believe for something if you're not having something to believe for? So I'll ask you again, what are you believing for today? And then I'll ask you something else. Who are you believing for today? Because as much as we're believing God for something, we need to make sure we're believing God for someone. Someone to know Christ. Someone to be enjoined in a relationship, a fellowship with Jesus that may not have one right now. And every one of us should know somebody that doesn't know Jesus. I know I do, and I'm sure you do as well. Somebody that just needs a deeper walk with the Lord. And you say, well, how do I know that someone needs a deeper walk with God? All you need to do is look at their lifestyle, look at their life, look at their decisions, look at their choices. They, they exude a, a correlation between their walk with God, wouldn't you say? Well, how many of you know we all need a deeper walk with the Lord? We ought to be believing God for that ourselves. How many of you want to, God, want to know God more than you do right now? Have a, have a better fellowship with the Lord than you do right now. I didn't say you don't have fellowship with him. I didn't say you didn't know him. I said you just want to know him better. It's good to say I want to know him better. I, I want that for others as well. We can believe for that. Believe for them that that's what they receive. But you know, I, I pray for a lot of you all for wisdom. How many of you want wisdom? How many Holy Ghost insight into the affairs of your life? Being able to know insight from God's perspective, things that you can't possibly know, but he does and he shares them with you because you believe him for it. This is the power of believing God. So we don't quit. We're persevering. But in our perseverance, we're believing God so that we can say, I've run my race. I finished my course into the glory of God. It has been completed. Anyway, praise God. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13, a familiar scripture. Isaiah 5, 13 simply says this. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they just don't have a knowledge of the word. Their honorable men are famished and the multitude are dried up with thirst. In other words, he's saying is that, that, that in essence, what you don't have a knowledge about, what you don't have a, a, the, the basis or foundation for believing God can hurt you. It can destroy you. Folks, it is, ignorance is no excuse. Having an ignorance of what it is the will of God in your life is no excuse. We have the Bible that delineates for us the instructions of the power and the wisdom of God. It's available to you and to me. And yet, sadly, as you all know, that there are times in which we, we, we unbox something that we're given and we instantly think, oh, I know how to, I, I can put that together. And we've all been guilty of it, haven't we? How many have ever gotten something and it came and had to be assembled and you didn't, you didn't even, you, you know, a passing glance of the instructions, you know, oh, I, I can put this together. Come on now, tell the truth. We've all done it because the instructions are in French and Spanish and Deutsch and, and everything else and, and, and you're like having to orient it as a big, huge, oh, I got this. And then all of a sudden after a while you kind of figure out where does this piece go? Why do I have pieces left over? You know, and, you know, and that wasn't supposed to be that way because we didn't read the instructions. And sometimes in life, we get to the point where we've done something often enough. We feel like I don't need the instructions. I've got this. Folks, these are the instructions. And we all need to go back and read it. Even when you say, well, I believe God before. Yes, you have, but you've not believed God for what you're believing God right now in the time in which you're living right now with what God's got going on right now. We need to go back and say, let's just rehearse. Let's remind ourselves David had to in the Bible. David looked back and said, I've never fought Goliath, but I did the lion and I lived the bear. And God was faithful there. He was able to reflect back, but then he still looked at the challenge before him and took heed unto himself. What did God want him to do? He didn't kill Goliath in the same way that he killed the lion and the bear. God brought that wisdom to him because he looked to him for help and strength. I'm saying right now, there are things going on in your life you have never faced before. And you can't use the weapons that were successful yesterday necessarily, that are, are going to be successful in what you're facing right now. Some of the principles, yes, but not the exact way. And what we need to realize is this, embrace the principles of God and let God bring wisdom of how he wants to implement these things in our lives. So in other words, you know, we all know that God says that we should go ahead and call those things that be not as though they were. Have you heard that before? We are people of faith who speak or call those things that be not as though they were. Abraham in Romans chapter 4 called those things that be not as though they were. 
His body was dead and yet he had to call himself father of many nations. From Abram to Abraham, God made him call himself the father of many nations. This is what Abraham means. He made him begin to look at himself differently than he had looked at himself before. We need to do the same thing with the help of God. Embrace the things that, that God is giving into you today. Embrace those things and call them for what they are. I encourage you, folks, this is not mind over matter, but you need to call and embrace the will of God in your life and start speaking over your life what God says about you. You know, so many times we put ourselves down instead of elevating ourselves in Christ. You know, how many know that God can do anything? And that's great to know, but how many of you know that God doing everything or anything doesn't help you any, any way at all? It's, in other words, what can God do in and through me? The God that can do anything is great, but what am I going to believe him for to do in me? That's why the Bible said, and we embrace it in Philippians chapter 4, we're told and encouraged that, that, that I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. So why don't we start saying this way? I can do all things through Jesus who gives me the strength and helps me to bring it to pass. Instead of just putting it off and saying, well, my God can do anything. How about my God can do his will through me? I allow him to by faith in Jesus' name. I am believing for this. I am confessing it with my mouth. I'm putting myself in solid agreement with God himself. And this is the point of believing. What we believe has to be aligned with who God is. What we say has to be aligned with who God is in his character. And so what we do is we say and we agree with God. That's all our confession is. We're just agreeing with God. We are agreeing with God. So Isaiah 5.13 says that, you know, you're going to be brought into captivity because of what you don't know. So let's fix that. Let's find out something. And that's where the basis of faith is, is an understanding of what does God say? What does God know? And what does he want to reveal to you today? Here, I, it, we're told and reminded here in, in Luke chapter 5, a story that I'd like to read to you, which is very appropriate today. Luke chapter 5, beginning at verse 17, says, It came to pass on a certain day. So this actually happened, folks. This is not some sort of a story. This is not a parable. This actually is a recounting of an actual event. It came to pass on a certain day as Jesus was teaching. As Jesus was teaching. Everybody say, Jesus was teaching. Now notice, it says, as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law which are sitting by, which are come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. These people came and they were listening. But not everyone that listens hears. Not everyone that listens hears. In other words, what I'm saying is not everyone that, 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 that listens to the word of God actually does something with it. See, some people say, well, if I can just hear the Bible, hear the word, then, then, then I get faith. No, you don't. That faith has to be enjoined into your heart, as it were. It has to be something you incorporate within yourself. And sometimes in life we get distracted. And stuff is going on, but we don't hear it. We don't really understand it. How much of what God is trying to do in your life you don't even notice? Because we get too busy. We get distracted. Our attentions are elsewhere. You know, folks, life is basically nothing more than a series of distractions. Have you noticed? You know, there's distraction over here, distraction over there, distraction over there. And if you're not careful, you get so focused on the distraction, you forget to see the will of God happening right there in front of you. And yet here is these people listening. And look what happened. It says there that as Jesus was, was teaching, all these people were sitting around. And it said there, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. But guess what? None of them got healed. Think about this for a moment. Do you know that right before you is the power of God to do whatever you have need of? Whatever his will is in your life right now, there is available to you his power to bring that to pass. Now see, here's the difference. If you truly believe that, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be the same. You can't be the same exposed to the power of God with faith to believe that God wants to do it in you and, and, and not be changed. As I said, let's go back and say Jesus appeared to you. Let's say, let's say today, Jesus just happened to visit you. Anybody would kind of welcome that? I had somebody years ago tell me, I wouldn't want him to, uh, uh, not until I get my life cleaned up. 
And I thought, well, why'd you do that now? <laughs> Why do you have to wait? Why did you do that right now if, that, if that's a concern? And I said, well, let's say Jesus appeared to you right now. Just appeared to you before you and, and, and just sat there. And, and he was like, what, I, I'm here for you. What, do you. what would you like me to do for you? My word, we'd be sitting there thinking, well, wow. You know, and I'm sure, uh, like we've said before, you ought to have it instantaneous. This is, what I'm, this is what I believe for. This is what I believe for. Father, I've already told you, Jesus, you already know what I believe. You've already heard it from me. I've already prayed about it. See, it should come as not a surprise to Jesus if he was to ask you that question, what it is that you're believing him for. You ought to have already told him. There shouldn't be some revelation to Jesus. This ought to be like, well, I, I've already heard your prayer. This is what you've already been telling me about. This is what you're believing for. See, that's what I'm saying. We need to make sure we have a constant communication with God, letting him know where we are and what we're believing him for. So when Jesus appears, it's just more than a consummation of, here's what I'm expecting, Father. Here's what I've been believing for. Tell me what I need to do to go pick it up. And yet this is Jesus here ready to deliver to them what they have need of healing. The power of the Lord was present to heal, but none of them got healed except for one. And you all know the story, of course, as he was ministering and as, as he was expecting a miracle. What happened? Well, there was these people who basically had a heart for somebody else. You ever notice how love overcomes a great, a great deal of difficulty in the lives of others? How many know that somebody walks in love, walks in the power of God and compassion and wisdom? It just seems like miracles follow them, such as it did in the, day, in the time and the day of Jesus. And it says here in, in verse 18 now, in this Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, it says here, verse 18, And behold, a man was brought in a bed, which was taken, as it were, with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in to where Jesus is, but they couldn't get in the door. Too many people were in there. And when they couldn't find a way to get in the door, because of that multitude, they went up on the roof and let him down through the tiling with his, with his couch or his stretcher. In the midst right before Jesus. Now let's just be honest with you. If you're hosting a meeting. Okay. Let's just, let's just pretend. Let's say that you're. Let's say you're a Mary Kay representative. <laughs> and you're hosting a party with your girlfriends. At, at, at somebody's house. And let's just say for the sake of argument. Jesus is there. And all of a sudden there's all these people there. And nobody could get in. Now, I don't know if Jesus is buying Mary Kay or not, but just work with me here. <laughs> and all of a sudden, somebody hops up on the roof and starts ripping off the asphalt ceiling tiles and the rafters and lowers somebody in the middle. How many of you might be slightly upset your house is getting remodeled? Well, think about this for a moment now. This is what happened, except for the Mary Kay part. This, what's going on? Jesus is in a house. He's ministering. Too many people in there just listening, but not acting on what he's saying. And yet there is somebody who's willing to act on what they're believing. Yet they seemingly can't get in to get where their miracle is. So guess what happens? Wisdom gets to them. Something happens. They say, you know what? If we can't get in the door, let's go through the roof. We talked about perseverance, not giving up. Folks, sometimes what happens is this. An obstacle appears to us. And sometimes we say, well, I guess it's not meant to be. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. Guess it's not my time. Maybe I just don't have the advantages of others. Maybe I didn't have the right this or the right that. You know what, folks? If you're believing God, that stuff doesn't matter. You go back to God, Father, I need wisdom. I need, to t I need you to tell me how I get what I'm believing for. Perseverance. The idea came out, well, let's get them up on the roof. This man had the palsy. He couldn't do it himself. What strikes me is this. It wasn't just the faith of the man with the palsy. It was the faith of the men that were willing to go ahead and say, let's get this guy up on the roof. You know, there's a big difference between somebody asking if you're at the grocery store and you can't reach the, the, uh, an item way up top because you may be a little, you know, more diminutive. So you have one of those big, you know, lurch come by. You're like, hey, do you mind reaching? Yeah. That's no big deal. That doesn't take a whole lot out to do. But how about if you had to ask somebody, would you mind, uh, could you carry that out to the car for me, please? Well, that's a little bit more of a commitment, isn't it? That involves a little more effort. Sometimes, folks, we're willing to do a little bit, but not all the way. 
We're able to give a little bit, but we're not willing to go the entire way that's required. Folks, I'm glad for these men. They're willing to say, hey, we brought you this far. We're going to get you healed. We've heard about this Jesus. He's healing people, but you got to get to him. We're going to get you to him. These people walked in love. They had a faith and an abiding presence, a sense of the power of God. And that they knew that if they could get to Jesus, this guy's getting his healing. I'm going to tell you, I want people like that around me. How about you? How about you watching? Would you like to have people like that around you that encourage you and inspire you and say, you know what, I don't care. Listen, it doesn't matter. I'm going to get you where you need to be. I've got you. I've got you. Well, I got news for you, folks. God's got you. And if it takes, if it takes that to get you into the will of God, to get you where you need to be, to pick up your miracle, you need to be believing God right now. In Jesus' name, I've got that too. My God is more than able. My God will deliver me. My God will enable me. My God will provide to me whatever I need of to see that the power of God is made available to do his glorious will in me. Now, if you're shouting where you are, good. Because you ought to. You ought to be glad. See, that believing God works. That type of believing God makes a difference, doesn't it? And yet there are others who will sit there and say, well, you know, maybe it wasn't my time. Folks, it is your time. This is the day the Lord hath made. God made it for a reason. He made it so you can rejoice. He made it so you can believe him. He made it so you can live for him. Just remember, every day is a day of adventure and gloriousness with him. Don't ever get up one day and say, well, you know, it's a blue Monday. No, you ought to get up and say, thank God it's a day to glorify Jesus and to have him glorified in me. Yes, I am preaching a little bit today, but it's okay. You know, in life we have the opportunity to realize that what we're receiving is a direct result of what we're planting in us. I would never expect to go into a garden where I planted tomato plants and get oranges. Because you know what, as much as you want an orange, if you plant a tomato plant, you're not getting an orange. Because tomatoes don't bring forth oranges. No matter how much you say, oh, I want an orange today. Well, then you should have planted an orange tree. But see, we're planting sometimes seeds and expecting a different harvest. So I'm going to ask you right now, what kind of seeds are you planting with your believing and with your saying? Think for a moment, if you don't mind. Um, look over to Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. You know, faith coming in your life and then believing opens yourself up to the, to, to the power of God. Acts chapter 14, beginning at verse 1, it said, It came to pass in a city called Iconium that they both went together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke, as it were, to that great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, and many believed. But the unbelieving Jews, and there were some that didn't believe. Folks, don't, don't imagine for a moment that everybody's going to fall down before you and yell, Hosanna, Hosanna, and be your best friend. There's going to be people as you live for God that will oppose you, that will bring persecution in your life. God gives us wisdom on how to deal with those people, right? God gives us wisdom on how to deal with those people, right? Bless them that curse you. Pray for those people that want to, you know, despitefully use you and all that. I mean, we have wisdom on this area. We ought to do that. We have to believe God for the power and the strength to be able to act that way. But, but now notice. The unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evilly afflicted against the brethren. And it says, long time then we abode there speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave them testimony under the word of his grace. And God granted signs and wonders by their hands. In other words, miracles happened. In the midst of persecution, in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of opposition, God still showed up. I'm telling you right now, no matter what's going on in your life right now, God can still show up. You can have turmoil, confusion, everything else around you. You can have people that are decrying, oh, no, it's not going to this, it's not going to. And you know what? You could sit in the middle of it and have God glorify you and show himself faithful in your life in the midst of everybody else saying, God can't, God won't. But if you believe he will, he does. See, you and I have to, as a believer, not allow the, uh, the unbelief of others to make our faith of no effect. Make the decision that you're not going to be somebody who allows others' opinions to affect your belief and trust in God. 
And then in verse 4 it says, And the multitude of the city was divided, part held with the Jews and part held with the apostles. And then, of course, you know what happened. There was an assault made, both of the Gentiles and the Jews of the rulers, to use them despitefully and try to stone them. But that they were made aware of it. You know why? Because God gave them wisdom. I love the fact that God gives us wisdom. As we're believing him, he gives us what we information we have need of to continue to believe him. It says there, but they were made aware of it, and they fled to Lystra and Derby, cities there of Lyconia, and the region that lies around. And there they preached the gospel. Folks, you and I need to make the decision that our belief and our trust is not affected by what's happening around us. My faith in God is not deterred by anything around me. And I know this is difficult because right now for some of us, this is a disjointed circumstance. We're dealing with, with a virus that has affected a pandemic of the world. And so we've got situations where churches are not freely able to, to meet with such freedom that we've had before. We've got, there's outbreaks in cities and things, and I, I get that. We have people watching, you know, watching us by, by, by electronic means online, not here in person. I get this. But in spite of all of that, we can still believe God. See, I'm saying is we're the church we're the church not because we meet in a building. We're the church because Jesus lives in us. Yes. And so whether you happen to be the church right now in your home or your house, I get it. I want to be able to worship and celebrate Jesus together. As the Bible teaches, we should be able to, to come together, not forsaking the assembling together of ourselves as some have done. Yes. But I'll tell you right now where we are, you are still a Christian. You are still a believer. You are still someone who is full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You're still a part of this church. Yes. We're a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And we ought to celebrate and not let anything deter us from believing God. Amen. And they still preach the gospel and miracles still happened. And I'm telling you right now. You could still believe God. You could still see God faithful. In fact, I'll tell you, if you're like me, maybe you've seen God develop you more deeply and you've seen more examples of the faithfulness of God in your life in areas you never saw before because you didn't have to believe for him in those areas before. You've seen God show up mightily. You've seen him display his power, his mercy, his gloriousness to you. You've been able to see the hand of God move in an area you thought, my word, I've never, I've never seen that before. God's always been that way. He just now is showing you a part that he hasn't revealed to you before this time. I'm going to tell you something. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. Don't allow your believing to get suppressed, diminished, diluted by anything that's going on around you. As he is the same, guess what? You're the same powerful Christian that you were a year ago, maybe even more so. Because we're growing leaps and bounds day by day from glory to glory. At least we should be. Isn't that right? Amen. And then in verse 7 here of, A of Acts chapter 14. It says, and as, as there they were preaching as it were. And then verse 8 says, and there was a certain man at Lystra who was impotent who, in his feet. In other words, he had no strength at all. He was unable to walk. He was a cripple from his mother's womb. This man had never walked in his life before. I can't imagine. Can you imagine just the, oh gosh. I mean, we take so much for granted. I mean, the ability to walk is such a great thing to be able to move from here to there. But this man had never known the, the joy, the freedom of being able to convey himself under his own power. If he went somewhere, he had to depend upon somebody else. And it says this, 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 this impotent man who had never walked, this same man heard Paul preaching and speaking who then steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed Paul looked at him and something just came over him some just just in his spirit he perceived in his spirit that man has faith to be healed now I'm going to ask you a question that's amazing here's a man that has never walked yet he had, was able to garner supernaturally faith to believe that he could walk something he had never done before Simply hearing the message that Paul preached. I don't know. That, that just seems astounding to me. How do you get from, from going to the, to the meeting and, and, and going like, well, this is just my lot in life. 
to hearing the message of the power of God preached and thereby being able to have that faith that says, I can be healed. Ah, yes, I, 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 I see this. Paul noticed him, perceived that he had faith to be healed, and look what he did. Got him to act on it. Paul said with a loud voice, boldly, stand upright on thy feet. And what happened? He leaped and walked. Now here's what gets me about this though. This man had faith to be healed, but thank God for Paul's obedience to the Holy Ghost because this man hadn't been taught how to act on his faith. This man had all that faith in him. I mean, he, he, he garnered. The Bible said in Romans 7 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You hear the word preached, faith is able to come and germinate within your life. Well, it must have germinated real quickly. It came. And yet he didn't know what to do with it. Paul then be able to direct him and say, now let's, let's do something with that faith. Do something with that trust. Do something with that confidence in Jesus. Do something with that now. So you can get what it is that you're wanting. I, if you can, spend that currency. Spend the currency to get what you're, what you're wanting. And so what happened? Paul said sternly, boldly, with a loud voice, get up and walk. He leaped up and walked. Believing was not enough. He had to bring some action to it. And sometimes in life what happens is we, we, we discount that, that time of getting and garnering faith. We sit in a message, we hear, we hear the word being preached, and we say, oh, my word, that sounds good. But then we need to be, not just allow it to stop there. We need to begin to act on it. One of the most powerful ways you and I can act on what, what faith we have is by what comes out of our mouths. You ever notice sometimes that you... Undo what God's trying to do in you through what comes out of your mouth. How many times have you ever sided in with doubt and unbelief? Maybe someone in your family, someone around you starts mentioning their testimony, their experience. And all of a sudden you begin to turn, as it were, down the temperature of your fervor and, your, and of your faith. Folks, you need to be very careful. When faith comes and you begin to fuel that in your, you know, in your spirit, you need to act on it. It's a precious commodity. You need to act on it. Does that make sense? There, there, there's an excitement that comes, yes, but there is a faith that is so much more powerful than the excitement. You need to be someone who helps others achieve that as well. Can I share with you a personal story that, and then we'll be in the close here. I was blessed to have good parents. Many of you know my mom and dad. Good godly folks. They really are. But, but at the same time, they, they taught a lot of lessons that were life lessons that were good. Many years ago when I was a, you know, a young teenager, I was into photography. And I, I just loved to take pictures and things like that. And I was, you know, I was pretty good at it. And uh, you know, didn't look, look at myself as being that artistic, but when it came to photography, it just clicked. You know, I enjoyed it. And so there's a lot of different things, and I remember uh, we had access to a dark room in our junior high school and later in our high school, which was great. I, you know, was able to use and did so extensively. But of course, you know, I like to have my own. You know, who wouldn't want their own dark room back in the day? Now I know we have digital stuff nowadays, but it used to be back in the day. You took with negatives and had to have them developed, and you know, some of you younger folks don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, and so we had to do all these things, and I was good at that. But I thought, I want my own. I remember talking to my parents. I, I'd like to have my own dark room. They looked at me, and basically their response was, well, just believe God. That really wasn't what I was wanting to hear. <laughs> what I was wanting to hear was, yes, son, we'll, we'll buy that for you. That's not what I got. Yeah, I got was, well, just believe God. So guess what I did? I believed God. God opened up supernatural favor. Turns out a house had burned in the neighborhood down, you know, my paper route. And so on Saturday morning, about 6 o'clock in the morning, I, you know, delivering the paper. And uh, all of a sudden I started talking to this, this man who, it turns out, had bought the house and was a contractor. 
And so after several weeks, after weeks, I talked to him every Saturday morning. He got to know me, and he was just a really nice man. And, of course, he, you know, he got talking about what kind of interest I had in photography. You know, and he asked, well, what are you going to do? I said, well, I'd, I'd like to have a dark room, but, you know, I, you know, I don't know where to begin. I need to, you know. And he said, well, okay, that's, would you have a basement? Yeah, we have a basement. And he was like, well, you, you need two-by-fours and lumber and all that. He goes, I've got that. I said, well, yeah, but I don't. Well, I, I've got that, meaning I've got it. I'll give it to you. He gave me all the stuff I needed for a dark room. But it all started because I developed a relationship with this guy. It all came up as I was ministering Christ to him. Young teenager. Talking about Jesus. Something else that my parents taught me was I wanted a camera. And again, I got the answer. Believe God. I wanted them to buy it for me. They said, believe God. I had to believe God. I knew exactly, okay, fine, I knew what I wanted. I went out and found out what I wanted. I knew how much money it was going to cost me. A little over $200. I had a paper route. So I got, you know, started working and got the money. And I had most of it, it was in coins. I had about $175 in coins. You know how heavy that is? My dad traveled quite a bit. And I remember it was about, oh, I don't know, 8 o'clock at night. And I knew to the penny what I had to have in order to buy the camera and the lens that I wanted. To the penny. With tax. In New Jersey, which has high taxes. So I sat there and said, okay. About eight, a little after eight o'clock, in the wintertime, pouring down rain, with my sister and brother, obviously young, you know. Came to my mom and I said, mom, I've got the money. I believe God worked. God was, you know, had favor, and, and I've got the money to buy the camera. I want the camera. It's mine. You know what my mother did? Well, she said, well, honey, you'll, you know, you, you'll have to wait until later. No, you know what she did? She got, okay, fine. She loaded up my brother and my sister over their objections. <laughs> Why do we have to go? And brought me about 35 minutes away to the mall. That closes at 9 p.m. I got there about five minutes before 9. Walked into a Ritz camera. Put down my thing there. My huge bank bag full of over $175 in coins. And I said, I want that camera outfit here. This, okay, fine. They said, how are you going to pay for it? I said, with this. They said, oh, no, we don't. Uh, that's change. You'll have, I said, excuse me. This is United States currency. You're obligated to receive currency. I'm giving you tender in kind. And, I, I, and I'm, you know, I'm about 15. They looked at me and I said no. And they said, well, I have to get the manager. The manager came. I said, sir, I understand this, but I have been waiting for this. I, he looked at me and he goes, you know how long it's going to take to count that out? I said, yes, sir, I do, but I'll help. He said, okay. He sat there. We were there till after 10 o'clock at night counting coins. Good thing, too, because I had three cents and left over that came back to me. <laughs> Got my camera. Here's the whole point of those, of those lessons. I was believing God. And the fact of the matter is my mother was willing to say, well, let's, do, let's, let's put some action. Let's get the reward of your faith. That teaches you something right now, that when you're believing God, you get the answer. When you're believing God, it comes. And, and see, sometimes in life, we, don't, we, we, we need to be people that are willing to do that too to help others. We see someone else believe in God, and we can have a part in, the, in, in, in action and seeing that come to pass. We ought to be willing to jump in there and say, hey, count me in. Because here's the thing. We reap what we sow. We say we're people of love and we walk in love. We do, don't we? We ought to help foster that in the lives of others. No one will come back to us. And I happen to know Jesus is better than my mother. And when I had what I needed, developed that faith, that trust, and that confidence, and got the, you know, I, I was able to go ahead and marry that with what that, 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 that opportunity and was able to see it come to pass, that just shows me how much more God does. I'm telling you right now in your life today, you believe in God, undoubtedly you better be. It's not deferred, it's not delayed. You put your faith, your trust, your confidence in Jesus. You put your faith and your belief right now in his hands. Know of a certainty that when you have that which you have need of, God instantly comes through for you. 
Because he cares about you. He loves you. He loves you affectionately because you're his kids. He doesn't take that lightly. I said he doesn't take that lightly. Paul preached. The man, is it where he was perceived that the man had faith? Paul got him to act on it and he got his miracle. I have to close here, but I'm just telling you right now in life, we're going to spend a couple of weeks on this area, but I'm telling you right now, you and I, all of us as believers, can act on what we have in our hearts and expect God to come through for us too. Never diminish the import. Never diminish the impact. What you're believing, the faith that you have, the trust, the confidence you have right now in Christ himself of what it can produce in your life, but you need to act on it. You need to be willing to act on it. You need to be willing to take hold of it. You need to be able to expect it. And I'm telling you right now, expect, expect Jesus to come through for you with what you're going through. Don't bring him just your need. Bring him the seed of his word and let God bless that and grow it and develop it in you so it comes exactly what you have need of to get your miracle, to get what you're believing him for. When I say greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world, that's exactly what he means. When he says, I can do all things through Christ, that's exactly what he wants you to be doing. And you can and you are in Jesus' name. Aren't you glad? I said, aren't you glad? So don't ever be, don't ever get discouraged that you can't because you can and you should be and you are. Keep ministering. Keep blessing others. Keep sharing the gospel with other folks. When you say, I can't take any more, that's a lie. That's not true. You can because greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Yeah. Fill your heart with faith. Fill your heart with what God says. Stop allowing the opinions of others to become infecting you. As bad as COVID is, I'll tell you something right now. What's worse is doubt and unbelief. Yeah. Doubt and unbelief can't just kill is it were, you know, your body, it can kill your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations. It can kill that which God is trying to develop within you. So don't let it happen. Amen. Don't let the devil win. Let him know he's defeated and you're the winner in Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. We honor you, Father. All of us have hopes, dreams. All of us have things that, 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 that we want to come to pass in our lives. But Father, just having that hope and a dream isn't enough. We need to put it within your hands. Put it before you. Weigh it, as it were. Is this your will? But Father, if it is, and we know that it is, then let's find out what you say about it. Help us, Father, to develop a trust, a belief, a faith, that's solely based upon what you say in your word, the Bible. Help us, Father, to be willing to accept your opinion over the opinions of others. Help us, Father, to act on what we know in our heart is true. Help us, Father, to be that blessing to others, to inspire them to reach for the heights that you have right there for them as well. We're not selfish, Father. It's not all about us. It's about what you want for us and others. Enable us, we pray in the name of Jesus, to be somebody who's busy doing the Father's will. We praise you, Father, right now that if there be anybody that doesn't know Christ, unsure of what happens when they die, not clear on whether their life is going the right direction, Father, you love all of us, but you got a plan for those that, Father, are unsure, unclear, just don't have direction. Father, you said in your word that whoever would call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you would save. Father, I pray right now that if there be anybody that's, that's, that's listening and watching this, that, Father, if they need that, and they're calling out to you. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Forgive me of my sins. Fill me with your spirit. Allow my life to matter. Help me, Father, to be what you want me to become. In Jesus' name.
And Father, I pray right now that if anyone did pray that prayer, I pray, Father, they'll reach out. Reach out to me, Father, to, to this ministry so we can be a blessing to them and help encourage them on what, what comes next. Help us, Father, to be a blessing to all people. Help us, Father, to inspire others to live by faith. We praise you and we honor you, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Well, for those of you that are watching online, this is going to rather conclude our time together, but not before we ask you, if you don't mind, on the screen there's some information that you can undoubtedly see. These are opportunities that you could be a blessing to this ministry, to this church. And so I would ask you to just, just think about it for a moment, pray about it, of maybe sending us a gift, a financial gift of support to this ministry that we could continue doing, even what we're doing right now. And, and you know, the Bible teaches so much about it's, it's a blessing to give, and it is. It's a blessing to give. But at the same time, it's, it's just a blessing to just obey God. The Bible teaches us and, and reveals to us that, that in that gift and that offering that we can send, not only are we doing things that are honorable in the sight of God, but we're opening up ourselves to being able to be blessed by the Father. As I said, you've got things you're believing for. Give God something to work with. You reap what you sow. We're good ground. And so if you uh, find it in your heart to do, the information's on the screen. There's, I think you've got Cash App and a few other things that people are using. If you will, we'd ask you to go ahead and, 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 uh, and act on that. And, and uh, I promise you we'll use it well and use it to his glory and hopefully your benefit in Jesus' name. Well, we're going to be back here Wednesday night, and I hope you will too. We're live Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock Central Time. And if you'd like to be a part of our, of our time together, we'd love to have you. Or whenever you're able to view, you can also see us on our YouTube channel. That's Germantown Christian Center on YouTube. And, of course, on Facebook at Germantown Christian Center. But until that time, I guess we get to see each other again. I love you. We all love you. We want the best for you. Never forget, Jesus is your Lord. To that end, God bless you. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye now.